previously. You said that couldn't be mirrored. And so we go. Hello, friends. My name is Renee, and welcome back to Professor Layton in the Curious Village. I, this is really loud. Um, the last time that we played, we got the little dog, so we're going to go to bonuses and check out that dog before we start. Um... Layton's challenges. What is this? The Inventor's House. Test your wits against the hardest puzzles the professor has to offer. Do you have what it takes to solve them? I guess I'll find out. Ooh. Test your wits. Okay, it says the same thing. Tough a puzzle to solve it. Um, diamond in the flag, I guess. <laughs> Do give this puzzle a try. <laughs> Below is a diagram of a flag. From the measurements shown on the diagram, can you calculate the f what fraction of the flag's total area is represented by the diamond in the middle? Your answer will be in the denominator form of 1x form. Don't complicate things by bringing trigonometry into the mix. The solution is simple enough to work out in your head. Um... Probably. Hold on. So, calculator 120 times 80 is 9600, and then 80 minus 40, that's 40 times uh, 120 minus 60 is 60. No, isn't it like half? Looks like it's half. Well, here's my guess. <laughs> it was worth a shot. I was sure I had it. <sighs> Let's try again. Okay, so. 96 divided by 2400. 2400. Is it a fourth? Let's try minus 2400. I think it's a fourth. No, not a fourth. Hmm. Oh, I was sure I had it. <sighs> so it's not a half, it's not a fourth. Is it a third? All right, let's get a hint. Split the flag, in the flag into four equally sized rectangles by drawing a vertical line and horizontal line to the middle. So divide the diamond into quarters as well. So, that was horrible. Okay. It's like a sixth. Smaller rectangles can actually be broken down into fourths again. Be careful when calculating the length for each side. Is a small rectangle really 30 by 20 inches? Hmm. No, because that's half. So, the smaller rectangle is 60 by 40. And this 30 is 30, so it's half of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's 
half of that. So that would make it an eighth. No, I don't want to do that. I want to put a solution in. How does this sound? There we go. Okay, cool. Splendid solving. Of course I expected nothing less from you. Alright, the next die. Let's give it your all. I will do my best. The three and six odd dies of several dice of several dice are lined up end to end to form a particular pattern. Which of the three options below should go next in order to continue the pattern? Uh, down, up, down, right, up, right, up, right, down, right. No? I've let you, down. you usually are really good at patterns. The dice may seem like they're laid out randomly, but if you pay attention to one element, so there's really a method behind their arrangement. I mean, it's one out of three chance. So now I have half a chance to get it right the next time. Let's see if I can figure it out first before I just guess. Um, none of them go up. So it has to be the one that goes to the right. Three, three, six, three, six, three, six, three, six. I mean, I think I've got it. Professor, I solved it. Nicely done. If you look at the dots on the dice as three rows stacked on top of each other, you can see that there's a trend to the top row of dots. Is there? Oh. So the next one would have to be seven. Zero, 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 zero. The groups of dots continue in an unbroken chain on the top row increase one by one each time. The final set of dots should be six dots in a row. You'll need three more dots to make that happen. Therefore, the answer is C. Oh. I wouldn't have figured that out. Tons of triangles. I have a bad feeling about this one. God. The diagram below shows a triangle with several triangle lines running through it. How many different triangles can you spot within the diagram? Okay, so there's one. Okay. There's two. There's three. There's four. There's Five, bless you. Six, seven. Oh God. Okay, hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. I want to say it's 14. No, it's probably 15. I was so embarrassed. It's either 15 or 16. There's only so many pick paths I can lose. Alright, so we'll try 15. Oh. I think I've got it. 
Jesus. It's 16 then. I've let you down, Professor. Try again. I don't want to be the hint, so you just have to count triangles. It's really easy. I just lost by a couple. Nope. Well, here's my guess. Not 16? So 17. Try 13 just to be sure. But we'll try 17 after that. I've had counted the same one twice. So try 13 and then 17. I think I've got it. I've let you down, Professor. I'm just gonna brute force this one, I'm not even playing. Like, I've already counted the triangles. I know I'm just probably a couple off. Nope. I think I've got it. Professor, I solved it. <sighs> Let's see, what did I miss? I miss the where it says two and Three. I think I missed those. Or I think I missed two and uh, maybe ten. I don't know. Alright, cool. Alright, cool. That's all this. Let's get back to the story. Wait. I can't do the weekly puzzle. Yay. After witnessing Raymond's abduction right before their very eyes, Luke and Professor Layton are shocked to see him return to Rhinehold Manor on his own. I had a sneeze. Busy with the murder investigation, Inspector Chomi warns Layton against meddling any further. However, Layton is confident that the Golden Apple and the morning's murder are linked to one another. Finally free to move about, Layton and Luke begin their search for the Golden Apple in earnest. Oh yeah, I was headed to the journal in Dahlia's room. That's right. Okay. Any hidden? No. Okay. Hey, Matthew's not here. Uh, what? Oh, the dog finds hit coins. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Guess they have to be on the floor for him to find them. Lady Dahlia, are you in here? Puzzle. Okay. Oh, that's the journal. This must be the journal that Matthew spoke of. I have to admit, he seems to know where everything in the manor is. There's something about reading someone else's journal that just doesn't seem proper to me. However, the investigation must continue, so... The craftsmanship of it is simply remarkable. It reminds me of my sweet Violet when she was alive. What do you suppose it refers to? Flora doesn't like the thing at all. I've seen her run away from it on multiple occasions. Recently, she spends more time playing by dear Violet's grave than anywhere else. Sad to say, I doubt Flora will ever take to it. I can't blame her as I've changed its memory. I feel terrible for forcing that change on Flora, but I just couldn't bear to see it like that anymore. Violet, I can never be another you. You are my first, my last, my only. Changed its memory? I'm not sure what the Baron means, but this is clearly some vital information here. It collapsed some days ago and had been better and never since. I feel as if I failed Flora as a father. I can only hope that when I am gone, the people in the village look after Flora and care for her as I did. I must have been terribly ill. It seems I am not long for this world, and the time has come for me to say goodbye to little Flora. I've left everything in Bruna's care now, Flora. I pray you find happiness in this life. I've disclosed the location in the secret place in a note that I've left with an old friend. It's my most favorite hope that the secret of the golden apple finds it and grants my dearest wish. Professor. 
Baron Reinhold's old friend. Let's seek out this person, Luke. But Professor, how can we possibly find that person with nothing but this journal to go on? <laughs> it's like I always say, Luke. Any good investigation starts on the street. We'll have to ask everyone in town about the matter. What? I mean, of course, you're absolutely right, Professor. Let's get to it. Of course, any good investigation also needs direction. Start out by asking Ingrid a few questions. She seems to know a great deal about Baron Reinhold. Okay, is that all in here? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, uh, hello. Would you please let me know of any eligible bachelorettes you might meet in your travels? Of course. I'd like to be left alone for a little while, Professor. I need some time to collect my thoughts. <sighs> you needn't worry. I assure you I'll find Simon's killing myself. For now, just let me do my job and get back to your search for that golden apple. Alright. Later. Where is... Matthew. Oh, Ingrid, what are you doing here? Oh, look who it is. Professor Layton, was it? Uh, the name's Layton, madam. Oh, that's right. Professor Layton. All that talking about the mansion we did last time got me reminiscing, so I decided to stop by for a visit. But enough about me. By the look on your face, it seems like you have something you want to ask me. As a matter of fact, I do. Do you know? Uh, uh, do you happen to know who Bra Baron Reinhold considered his close friend? His friends, you say? Well, he wasn't exactly what you call a social butterfly. I'm sorry, that's really all I knew of his friends. Oh, wait a moment. I do believe I saw that Zippone fellow pay a visit to the mansion a few times. Professor, could she be referring to the man we met? Ah, uh, yes, the gentleman with the fancy little mustache. We should ask if he knows anything. I would wager he's still hanging about the fork in the road just beyond the clock tower. Well, that was easy. Any other... Thank you, dog. Hey, you have another quest for me? Or another mission? Uh, but the puzzle? Oh, Dolly, it sure it's gorgeous, ain't she? Yep, sure is. What a dish, what a doll, what a honey. Gals like that are pretty where I tell you. Yep, yep. Good to know. Anybody in the shop yet? No? Okay. Away I go then. Do you have another uh, puzzle for me? If you don't have a form to file to further, have to. If you don't have a form to file or further business here, I strongly advise that you scram. Holy crap! I can't talk. Hey, found a coin. Yo, what is up? Nothing good can be said about that tower. Yep, you've told me. Granny, do you have anything? Nope. Okay. You're just here to tell me about puzzles again. You got anything for me? Where's the fun running around town trying to help other people? Don't you feel so dumb? No, not even a little. My nose is so dry. Oof, fridge sure looks up a mean appetite. I'm starving. Yo. Back for another match, eh? I just knew that you were two a bunch of chess fanatics. Nevertheless, this one won't be easy for even a pair of chess fiends like you. Is this the queen's thing again? Oh, God. Okay. Uh. 
Well, that one was actually easier than the last one, huh? Very nice. This one was a bit tougher than the 4x4 version, wasn't it? There's more than one answer for this puzzle, so if you really want to challenge, search for alternative solutions. Wowzers, looks like I'm going to have to pick up a harder puzzle if I want to stump you. Can't wait for you two to see my next puzzle. Ooh, another painting scrap. That's actually really nice. Thank you. I want to get that painting finished. Am I glad to see you, Professor? I seem to have gotten myself into another jam. I know you're busy and all, but I just can't find the answer to this puzzle. Can you give me a hand with it? Did you lose your measuring cups again? Oh. Some careless delivery man loaded two shipments of fruit into the wrong warehouses. As you can see in the picture below, the oranges are currently in the apple warehouse and vice versa. Can you correct the mistake and put all the fruit in the proper place? Don't sneeze. Please, don't sneeze. This one's not super hard, it's just time-consuming as hell. I mean, I'm sure you could do it in quite a few less moves, but, yeah. <sighs> Great job, fresh fruit for all. Ah, so that's how it's done. Thanks again, Professor. Yay, another painting scrap. Alright, let's look at the painting. As well as my journal entries. The thing on the last page. Yep, beautiful grave. Lady Violet's grave is a truly beautiful place. The Baron's devotion and love for her is reflected in every detail of the place. Matthew mentioned that the Baron kept a journal detailing his thoughts. If we could find it, I imagine there is much written in the pages. The pages of Baron Reinhold's journal were filled with passages reflecting upon his deep love for his child and late wife. Additionally, we discovered that the Baron left a note deposing the location of the Golden Apple in possession of his good friend. Perhaps Ingrid knows this friend of the Baron's. Sadly, even Ingrid, despite her intimate tries, ties with the Reinhold family, had to admit that she never even heard of the Golden Apple during her time at the manor. Ingrid recommended that we pay Zipone a visit, and so we shall. Really, though, does that man ever have anything useful to say? Well, that's just rude, Layton. Nope, that's the right way. Okay. Alright. Uh, off we go. I want to see if there's anything down that way. I know it's dumb, but... Nope. Okay. Nothing else? Okay. Alright, through the clock tower. Oh wait, actually, I want to visit this guy again. Okay. 
If you really want to understand Save Us Trayer, you need to search the village thoroughly. Good luck, friends. Only this. Thank you. What about the lady at the end? Do you have anything new for me or there's nobody here? Thank you. Another hint coin. I will be full of them soon. Let's go. Uh, I have to click the button. Yo! Little girl and cat and mouse are back. That cat and mouse seem to get along pretty well, don't they? Do you think so, Luke? I would have guessed the cat was tormenting that part mouse, but if you say the two of them are friendly, I believe you. Of course, it has to do with the animal. It has to do with the animals. Leave it to me. By the way, Professor, have you heard this one before? Words E. According to the diagram shown here, A is 2, B is 3, C is 3, and D is 4. So what does E equal? C is 3? D would be 1, 2, 3, 4. It's how many things are touching the sides. Could have counted wrong, but let's put it in. That's ridiculous. Every puzzle has an answer. Okay. Yep. Number of uh the number assigned to each letter refers to the number of sections that are touching the labeled section. Yep. Gosh, I was sure I come up with a really good puzzle, but it's still too easy, I guess. I sure don't seem to be a lot of animals around town. You're quite the animal lover, aren't you, Luke? No, come along. We don't have time to sit here and play around. Hey, what's up, little girl? Lucy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, mister. Hey, I'll tell you a secret if you solve this puzzle for me. It's about a girl who you, uh, who's about to have her birthday. Is it you, Lucy? I mean... Sixty picker hat. Holy crap. <sighs> When asked about her birthday, a young woman gives the following information. The day after tomorrow, I turned 22, but I was still 19 on New Year's Day last year. When is her birthday? So, she's about to be 22. She's 22 now, or she'll be 22 in two days. But now she's 21. So, if it's... January 3rd? Okay, so... Uh, New Year's, she would have been 19. And then on the 3rd, she would have turned... Uh, 20. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to say it's January 3rd. If not, I'll try it. Oh, no, no. Erase.
Let's try January 2nd, because it might not be New Year's yet. I'm going to try January 2nd. That makes sense. That's right, her birthday is January 2nd. A conversation with her must have taken place on December 31st. As you can see on the chart above, the woman was 19 on New Year's Day last year, and she turned 20 the next day. This year, she turned 21, and in two days after the New Year starts, she'll turn 22. Wow, you're so smart. Okay, come close so I can tell you my secret. I heard that all the people who get kidnapped feel a little sick right before they get taken. I bet the monster that lives up in the tower feeds its victims super gross food before it pounces. Oh, I bet it's like hamburger ice cream with butterscotch and mayonnaise swirl. That's disgusting. Ew. Or maybe he just picks the weakest of the bunch to snatch. I just don't get why he needs all these people. Oh, Lord. Anything else, Lucy? Hey, mister, it's good to see you again. See, I'm totally stuck here because I'm use your help. My friend told me this puzzle the other day and it just can't solve a thing. Can you help me? You have two puzzles in a row? What? <laughs> On Valentine's Day, your gadget-loving, technophile uh, girlfriend gave me the most unusual slab of chocolate. While well, the jumble of letters looks like nonsense, if you manage to decode the letters written on the chocolate, a message from your sweetheart will appear. What is she trying to tell you? Rather surprising that your girlfriend would leave a message by a chocolate. It's usually more her uh, contact to more her style to contact you via digital means. As a self-professed gadget fiend, on more than one occasion she has suffered from the uniquely modern condition of texting thumb. She's still stuck. Just look at your closest keyboard for a hint. How does that help me? G. What? There's only one vowel in here.
text me? That one broke my brain a little. Another puzzle solved. <sighs> oh, is that all I had to do to figure it out? Why didn't I think of that? Can you keep a secret? Don't tell I, Adria, uh, Adria, you told me the answer. Okay, thanks, mister. Anything else, little girl? Major is really nice, but she comes up with some tough puzzles. Oh. Thank you. Here's the phone, right? Close friends of the Baron. It's true, I had the pleasure of meeting Baron Reinhold a few times. Mr. Zapone, you didn't happen to be good friends of the Baron, did you? Me? Uh, no, no, I was nothing of the sort. Can you think of anyone at all who is close to Baron Reinhold? No, I didn't really know him. Well, there was that one possibility. No, wait, never mind. I'm not sure. I guess the phone can't really tell us much of anything. Yes, I'm afraid he has no help at all. I suppose that means we're back where we started. But at least we can be sure that the close friends were after his resident estate mystery. We can't give up, Luke. Let's continue to ask around. Thank you. And nothing else here. Okay. Let's look at the journal entry it gave me, and that'll be it for this. Total disappointment. As I suspected, Zapone hasn't had a single piece of good advice for us regarding the Baron's mystery friend. If we are to find the individual we seek, it looks like we will need to rely on the time water technique of taking to the streets and talking to the townsfolk. All right. I'm going to end that episode there. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. I'm going to end up setting out. Bye.